Hi folks, and welcome back to Meaningful Money. Still here high up above Sennan Cove, beautiful beach. Behind me uh, looks like the Coast Guard helicopter is uh, flying up there, you can't see that, but uh, hopefully we'll get too much closer or else we'll have to stop because of the noise. Going to round off our little series on successful investing here. This is the fifth one uh, in that series. And just look at some classic retail investor mistakes. Ordinary people like you and I. So, you know, the professionals don't make these mistakes as a rule, but ordinary people like you and I tend to make them all the time. I see it all the time in my sort of day job, if you like. Um, believe it or not, this is not my day job, just doing this, talking uh, to a video camera on top of a cliff. Um, I see it all the time and I want to try and help you avoid them just by highlighting them. But as ever, before we get into the detail, my friends down here in the bottom right, that's Seven Investment Management. They continue to sponsor me here on Meaningful Money and I'm extremely grateful to them for doing so. Well, hopefully in the last four videos, you've been able to see just how uh, much investing is a science and not an art. I started this series really by saying that because I don't know about you, but I don't want an artist managing my money. You know, I don't want decisions being made about my future wealth based on how an artist is feeling that day. You know, <laughs> the sort of passionate uh, uh, artistic temperament. I don't want anywhere near my finances. No, I want clinical, clean, disciplined approach to managing money. And hopefully I've explained over the last two or three videos that asset alloc allocation um, is the way that that should be done. Now, perhaps as a result of that, you realize that, you know, that's not something you want to take on yourself. And I mentioned last time that that can be outsourced either to a discretionary fund manager or a stockbroker or something like that, or a sort of multi-manager, multi-asset kind of fund. There are funds you can buy off the shelf which do that to a point. But even if you get all that right, there are some classic retail investor mistakes. Uh, which just happen all the time and which can just scupper the whole thing. So um, I sort of picked four of them. There are probably more, so I may well come back to this. Uh, and so here they are. The first mistake that uh, retail investors make is trying to time the market, all right? Uh, they get this wrong all the time. Nobody can time the market. Nobody knows when the best time is to get into a market. No matter how many sort of spam emails you get purporting to give you the key to investment success, nobody can do it. Not even the pros get it right. Um, there is no way you can time the market, so don't even bother. By the time you think something is a good idea to invest in, chances are it's miles too late. You may get it right one time in a hundred, but that's if you're lucky. So don't try to time the market. Again, that legendary quote um, from the uh, arguably the greatest investor ever, Mr. Warren Buffett, he said the time to be, well, he said, let me try and get it right, be greedy when others are fearful and be fearful when others are greedy. And the problem with humans is that they are pack animals. They tend to move when everybody else moves and by that time it's too late. You need to be contrary. So when others are greedy and buying into things, that's usually the time to sell it and vice versa. The second mistake is trying to pick a winner. Uh, this is essentially betting. It's the same as uh, picking horses. You can study form um, no matter what. You can pick a jockey that you know is very, very good, but you know so many things can go wrong that all your work can come to nothing. And it's largely the same with investments. Um, you can try and pick a winning fund manager based on their past performance, but you know what the caveats say about past performance. It's no guide to future performance. You know, you may pick a fund based on the marketing that that fund manager is doing, the adverts you're seeing. Well, if you do that, then that's frankly just stupid. Um, the fact is that very, very few investment managers are consistent. Um, there are stats on this, which I haven't got, but um, trying to pick a winner is very, very difficult. And in any case, you as a retail investor have only retail funds to choose from funds which you can get access to from a thousand quid or more. There are a myriad other funds out there for which you have to have a million pounds to even get a slice of. Okay, so perhaps those are the best ones. You will never be able to pick them because you just don't have the funds to do it. So don't try and pick winners. It's a mugs game. Third retail mistake, classic mistake, is that they incur too many costs. They're always trying to chop and change. And, um, you know, I've had it before when I've picked up an investment from a previous advisor or something like that, a portfolio, gone to review it with the client and said, oh, I think we should change this one. I think we should change that one. And I'm saying, well, okay, that's fine, but there's costs involved in that. 
and if you're always chopping and changing the cost that you incur by doing so can hamstring the performance of the whole thing so it's a classic retail investor mistake is to incur too many costs a good advisor certainly will help you keep those costs right down it's something i'm always banging on to my staff about keep costs down because there's probably very well there's very few things which can hamstring a performance uh, worse than too high costs and the last one is to have no strategy you know just amassing a collection of funds over time perhaps the flavor of the month funds that you've bought on now and again and you've just kept them and never changed them having no strategy is arguably the worst uh, mistake of all there's a phrase which says if you are planning to invest don't invest in the planning instead and i can't really think of a better way of putting that remember the three factors we talked about right at the start of this little series the returns you want the time scale you're talking about and the risks you are prepared to take these three things inform everything and if you keep those in mind you will actually uh, try and hopefully to avoid those four classic mistakes because it starts with what you want to achieve rather than just wafting your way through your investment life so hopefully that's helpful a little mini series wrapped up thanks for watching leave any questions uh, on the site here or wherever on the youtube channel wherever and i'll do my best to answer them uh, feel free to drop me an email as well which is uh, just pete at meaningfulmoney.tv or there's a contact thing on the site um, but hope that's been helpful thank you for watching and i'll see you next time